The ACU football team opens Anthony Field at Wildcat Stadium for the first game on campus since 1958. I'm Hannah Knoll. And I'm Grant Boone. Finally, a real home game. Hannah will take you deep inside Wildcat Stadium and give you a sneak peek at what everyone will see tonight. And we'll preview that game against Houston Baptist. It's the Adam Doral Show right now. Welcome to the Adam Doral Show from the JMC Network Studios on the campus of Abilene Christian University. I'm Grant Boone alongside the head coach of the ACU football Wildcats, Adam Doral. A landmark moment, 70 years in the making, is now just hours away from being realized. Tonight at 6 o'clock, right here at ACU, football returns to the ACU campus. It's the grand opening of Anthony Field at Wildcat Stadium. Coach, so many here have waited. They've yeah. wondered, would we ever see football yeah. on campus again? For you as the head coach, what does tonight mean? Oh, it's super exciting. You know, I think for me, obviously, the game's super exciting. But uh, for, for just for me personally, seeing all the work that so mm. many people have put in, uh, their time, their energy, their talents, their money uh, to get that stadium up. Uh, so many of our people, Lee, Dave, Drew, just our whole staff over there, Lance. Um, I, it, to see their excitement all week, and, and I know they have put a ton into this thing. And so... Uh, it's it's a really exciting deal, and uh, I'm super excited for our players and our coaches. There is a game to be played yeah, in, in yeah. the midst of all the pomp and the pageantry. Mm -hmm. Houston Baptist comes to town. Yeah. They're one and one. We'll talk about that game specifically a little later on in the show. Have you said much to your team this week to try to get them focused on the actual 60 minutes of the game and not maybe get distracted by what is going to be an amazing night? Yeah, it is. We uh, we've been talking about it all week, and uh, you know the verbiage we're we're, we're getting to our players is it's okay to say no, no, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I've been trying to be uh, as, as cordial as I can to folks too. But again, we, we have one job and that's something we started talking about uh, Sunday night in our meeting. Mm -hmm. We have one job to do. It's, this really reminds me of a homecoming or a family day type Good of point. game yeah. where it's, there's so much going on, which is awesome. Uh, but, but the football program and the coaches, we have one job to do and that's to win the football game. So we've been really focused on that. Especially important because tonight is the Southland Conference opener. ACU 0-0 zero and zero in the Southland Conference. And we'll preview that game a little bit later on. But when we come back, we will review last week's battle against another FBS opponent in Colorado State. We're back in a moment with more of the Adam Doral Show. Welcome back to the Adam Doral Show. ACU hosts Houston Baptist tonight in the first ever game at Wildcat Stadium. Last Saturday, the Wildcats played the second game at Colorado State's new stadium in Fort Collins, Colorado. With a look at the highlights, here's Jonathan Rates. After an opening season loss to the University of New Mexico, 38-14, the Wildcats returned to the drawing board for yet another Mountain West opponent. This week, it was an up-and-coming Colorado State team who was coming off a 17-3 loss to in-state rival Colorado, but looked more than ready to welcome the Wildcats. However, despite being listed as a 39-point underdog, ACU had no intentions of shying away from the looming challenge. It was the Rams scoring first on the opening drive of the game. Running back Dalen Dawkins capped off the 65-yard drive when he found Pater from two yards out. Dawkins would carry the ball 11 more times in the game, racking up 78 rushing yards. Colorado State would use momentum from the opening drive touchdown to propel them to a field goal and touchdown late in the first and second quarters. But the game shifted when the Rams coughed up the ball in the red zone, looking to add to their lead late in the first half. Senior Dylan Douglas jarred it loose and junior Brandon Richmond recovered it, but the score would remain 17-0 heading to the break. The Wildcats looked like a different team early in the third quarter. After forcing a punt, the special teams came through big time as senior Bryson Gates ripped through the line to block the punt and graduate transfer Eric Hume scooped it up for the score. Senior Nick Grout added the extra point and the CSU lead was cut to 10 at 17-7. But midway through the third, Colorado State would respond. Quarterback Nick Stevens found Dietrich Clark up the seam for 19 yards, and the Rams claimed a 17-point lead, 
24-7. ACU did not go away as it took the ensuing drive into the red zone, but would have to settle for a 29-yard field goal from, from ground. The field goal was the Wildcats' only points from two visits to the red zone on the day. The two-possession deficit did not hold long as the Rams took their ensuing drive 75 yards, 22 yards of which came on Stevens' connection with his running back, Izzy Matthews. Colorado State would add one final touchdown late when Marvin Kinsey bulldozed his way into the end zone from two yards out. Kinsey's touchdown brought the score to its eventual, eventual final at 38-10. CSU improves to 2-1 with the win, but has the daunting task of taking on Alabama, the number one team in the country next weekend. ACU falls to 0-2 and has now lost 11 of its last 13 games, but returns home for its home opener in a brand new stadium against Houston Baptist next weekend. Okay, Jonathan, thank you. 38 to 10, the final score in favor of Colorado State. Coach, you got exactly the start you wanted against New Mexico. Yeah. You stopped them on defense, you score a touchdown on offense. You get the exact opposite yeah, against Colorado yeah. State. You're down seven, nothing very early. Quick. And yet, with 10 minutes to go in, 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 in the second quarter, so 20 minutes or so later on the game clock, you're knocking on the door with a yeah. chance to cut it to three. How did you, did you survive that early uh, tough you know, start? I, I think a lot of it has to do with our players' uh, mentality and, and the mentality we've been trying to preach since we got here in January, just having a mental toughness about us, having an edge. Uh, you're absolutely right. Boy, that, that couldn't have gone any worse. <laughs> three and out, punt, they score. And it's not just they scored, it's how they scored. I mean, yeah. they ran some outside zone and just off tackle, power football, and uh, they hit us right in the mouth, and we didn't respond real well. And then, you know, we came in and we just settled in. So I was really proud of our prayers, players for how they responded. And, man, we did. We fought for uh, 60 minutes. You began to churn out some first downs. With, as I said, 10 minutes to go in the second quarter, you're on the doorstep. Fourth and goal at the one. It was 10 nothing. You could have kicked a field goal mm -hmm. to make it 10-3. You went for the touchdown, didn't get it. What went into the decision-making? Well, you know, for us, it's, it's, I've been trying to get our players to understand. Uh, uh, I really believe in the, the winning mentality. And if I'm going to preach that and talk about that, we're not going to kick a field goal mm. on the one-yard line against uh, a game where you're, you're uh, probably, I think, 48 to 50 points. <laughs> an underdog, yeah. I think, is what somebody told me. So I was really just trying to send a message to our players to play to win and, and really buy into that. 17-0 at halftime. They get the ball, Colorado State, to start the second half. They get one first down on their first play, but then three plays, you force a punt attempt. Bryson Gates right up the middle, yep. blocks the punt. And Eric Kuhn, one of those guys you brought in, one of those drop-down mm -hmm. players, you call them, came from a, a big-time program uh, before coming to ACU, scoops it up and runs it in. Yeah. It's 17-7, mm -hmm. and what had been a really loud stadium at the start, the cannons were going yeah. off, it got, got quiet. really quiet, did, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did. And, uh, you know, for me, just talking to their coaching staff after the game, I know um, they were very complimentary of our players and the way they played through the whole game. Obviously, that's not what they wanted. Uh, they, you know, their mindset was get the game over by half. <laughs> they play Alabama this week. They wanted to stay healthy. So... Our guys just battled, and we we blocked that punt, which uh, our goal this week was to block a kick and to score, and we did it on the same play. Score a special teams touchdown, and we did. And then just the excitement on the sideline where guys, again, were th that there was truly a belief that if we can get another score on there, man, it was going to put a lot of pressure on them. You get a field goal with four minutes to go from Nick. It's 24-10 with 20 minutes to go. Yeah. You had to feel like not only are we competing yeah. well, we're in this game. Absolutely we were, and that's, that's, that's how guys felt at halftime. That's how we felt as coaches. And that's, for me right now, uh, why I'm excited to get the conference season mm. started. I know this is a tremendous conference. I know it's tough, but we just played two really good FBS schools, and you know our kids didn't blink. They went out and played hard. They weren't intimidated. They weren't scared. And... Um, you know, from a standpoint of matching up, I thought we did that pretty well. To me, where you really saw the difference was in the depth. Mm. And that's something I've challenged our, our team on is we have to be more competitive in practice uh, in our program. And, you know, we, we have to continue to try to develop our depth through recruiting, through the weight room, through video study, and guys just uh, sheer desire to want to push uh, the starters. Three giveaways for Dallas Sealy in game one. His only turnover in this game was a Hail Mary yeah. at the end of at the half, which mm -hmm. to me doesn't even really no, count. Right. He threw 25 of 38 for 258 yards. Mm -hmm. And I thought in the second half, even though the stats didn't blow people away, I thought you found some things in the running mm -hmm. game. Am I off no, base there? No, absolutely not. No, I mean, you know, those guys are good. Uh, their defensive line's good. Their linebackers are good. They're big kids. Uh, I thought Dallas played really well. I thought the O-line did some good stuff. 
uh, our starting offensive line through 35 snaps didn't give up a sack. Correct. And when you're playing against a, a team like that, who I think uh, the week before had four sacks against a Pac-12 school in Colorado, uh, I think that says something right there. I thought our guys were ready to play. Uh, but that's been an emphasis of us. We're going to try to run the football better this week, and, and we're really working on that practice right now. But um, I think we're starting to – really find our identity at a good time. Be remiss if we didn't say Bolu Anafade safety, oh, 17 man. tackles, a career high. Gavin Burford had his yep. first career interception, and Brandon Richmond at safety had 12 tackles as well in what I thought was a really physical performance yes. by your defense. So now ACU gets ready for conference season. It begins tonight against Houston Baptist, and we will preview that game a little bit later on. We'll also get a preview of Wildcat Stadium from Hannah Knoll when we come back. But first, as we go to break, take a look at some of the scores from last week around the Southland Conference. Stay with us here on the Adam Doral Show. This week on the Sportscast. First, the Wildcats open a brand new stadium this weekend. We take a look inside the brand new locker rooms. Then, soccer traveled to Oklahoma this weekend after a convincing 7-1 victory over UTPB. We find out how they did. And finally, we look at the start of volleyball's three-game winning streak and the beginning to the fall season for golf. Welcome to the Optimist Sportscast. I'm Jonathan Rates. The team has been moved into its brand new home for almost a month now, and one of the highlights has been the upgraded locker rooms. The locker room features nameplates above each locker with all three jerseys the Wildcats will wear. ACU now has an all-black jersey and added a white helmet for the all-white jersey combination it will sport this year. The stadium also features a green room where the team can host its meetings on game day. Soccer finished the non-conference portion of its schedule in Oklahoma as the Wildcats fell to Oral Roberts and nationally ranked opponent Oklahoma State over the weekend. Head coach Casey Wilson said the team had early miscues but, but recovered in the second halves of both games. Last weekend, you know, we didn't get the results we wanted and, you know, up in Oklahoma against Oral Roberts and Oklahoma State, but I think we got a lot of, learned a lot of valuable lessons, you know, coming into this weekend. Anytime that you can play a, you know, a preseason schedule like we did, you know, it identifies a lot of weaknesses and some things we need to work on. The lone goal of the weekend was scored by sophomore Shea Johnson off a corner kick from junior Dylan Owens. The team opens conference play on Friday against Houston Baptist at Elmer Gray Stadium. While the volleyball team is back on track after a 3-1 weekend at the Borderland Invitational, the Wildcats lost its first match to New Mexico State in straight sets, but bounced back with a five-set victory over Samford. Senior Corinne Grancolis led the team with 15 kills, and the win propelled the Wildcats to a three-game sweep over Delaware State. ACU finished the weekend with a five-set battle against UTEP, where the Wildcats rattled off a 10-1 run in the final game to clinch the victory. The team is now 4-7 on the year. The golf team opened its season finishing 10th out of 19 schools in the Gene Miranda Falcon Invitational. The Wildcats shot a team total of 875, putting them at 11 over par. The team shot 293 in round one, 295 in the second round, and 287 in the final round. Sophomore Bryce Dooley stood out individually as he finished 24th overall with a one under par score in the tournament. The team will next play in the Jim Rivers Intercollegiate September 18th and 19th. Well, that's all we have for this week. For more stories and breaking news, you can go to acuoptimist.com and be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Rates. The long-awaited opening of Anthony Field at Wildcat Stadium is finally here and it's just in time for the home opener against Houston Baptist University. The stadium holds 12,000 fans with 8,500 seats and extra room in the berm, club level and suites. The Brown Family Club level on the third floor of the Chuck Sitton Tower is the first level of a three-story press box. The second story holding 10 suites lining the level and the third story held for press. The club has many features including seating for 300 people and standing room up to 400. The level is packed with TVs, ACU stools and a snack bar, all to contribute to the viewing experience of an ACU fan. The level is also open to the general public to be rented out for various events. The club level is just one of the facilities here at the new Wildcat Stadium. Today we have five-year veteran and team captain Cade Munden to give us a tour for the rest of the facilities. Cade, thanks for being here. It's great to be here. So the first home game is finally here and you finally get to play on this new stadium, but y'all have been using these facilities all summer. How has that been? It's really been awesome. Um, just the whole aspect that it's, it's brand new, it's here on campus, um, and it's right here. I mean, we walk out of the locker room, it's right there. So having it available to us over the summer and through fall camp has really been awesome. So how would you compare this experience to, say, 
shot well? Um, I, again, I think the aspect that it's new and it's right here is, is going to be great. Um, I know that Shotwell's been a great place for us to play, um, but this is on campus and the students don't have to travel very far to get here. And I think that we can fill it up and it'll be loud and crazy, so it's going to be exciting. Right, so what would you say is your favorite part of the new facility? Probably the locker room. Well, let's go. So here we are in the locker room. Tell me a little bit about it. What's your favorite part? So uh, it's brand new, as you can tell. <laughs> I mean, it's super nice. Um, it's really sectioned off into uh, position groups. So we've got the quarterbacks over here, running backs, receivers, um, tight ends, kickers, uh, defensive linemen, defensive backs, linebackers, and then uh, offensive linemen. And uh, also we've got some brand new furniture. Um, ping pong tables, TVs, so it's, it's really nice in here. So the players lounge is clearly very nice. Did y'all have anything like this at the old facility? Nothing like it. So it's kind of our, uh, our refuge. You know, we can come in here before games, before practice, uh, after weights and kick back on these nice chairs and watch TV and play ping pong. So it's really kind of our, our getaway from, from everything. Right, you've got two TVs in here. Posters over here talking about accolades and all that. Does, does this, all this, all this new stuff, does it give you the boost to want to do more? It really does. You know, it's, it's kind of that thing that we can hold in our back pocket and say, hey, look, this is what we're working for. Um, we've had all these very generous donations and, and whatnot that allow us to even have this stuff. And so it's, it's motivation for us of, hey, look, these people care enough about us to, to give us these, these beautiful things that... Now it's our turn to, to give them what they want, so it's very nice. Well, speaking of donations, let's take a trip up to the suites and check those out. Let's do it. So this is one of the suites. Um, there's a lounging area, and there's a food station back here with a refrigerator, and then there's also a nice TV. Um, uh, as you walk further out, <coughs> there's a ledge, and you can sit out there and watch the game uh, from a bird's eye view, so it's really nice up here. So this is actually the Anthony suite, and the Anthony's were the main contributor to the whole stadium, and that's, we have Anthony Field. So now that we've seen the suites, we've seen the locker rooms, we've seen the players' lounge, let's go down there and check out the field. Let's do it. So there's a little something different about this stadium than there has been in the past, and it's that the student section is actually on the opposite side, the visitor side. What do you think about that? I think it'd be great. Um, past stadiums that we've been to, all the student sections have been behind us and it's, it's really hard to focus when there's thousands of people standing behind you screaming at you. So I think that having the student section over there will be pretty beneficial to us. Yeah, it'll kind of give us the actual home field advantage by right. being able to be on that side. Um, so one question about the turf itself. You have these little green beads. Can you tell me a little bit about them? So the, uh, from what I understand, the green beads are kind of a coolant and so uh, whenever the sun shines down on the turf um, instead of having black beads there to, to absorb all that heat um, the green bead or the off-colored beads they actually reflect the heat so uh, I know in the past we've we've had guys come off the practice field with their shoes like really melted off like actually melted off and so having this this uh, new turf and new beads has really been awesome so you'd say that you can definitely tell the difference? I can definitely tell the difference. So um, having a new stadium, like you've said, it's on campus. It's right here. People can walk from their dorms. How do you think that's going to change the culture of ACU football? I think it will change it uh, like people will actually be able to show up. Uh, you know, driving all the way across town is <clears throat> not an option sometimes for some people. So um, I think that being able to walk right from your dorm, come over here, get in the stands, get something to eat, get crazy with your friends. I think that that'll be a huge game changer in uh, ACU football. So along with the culture, you, you guys, you the team, are the ones that are really stimulating that. It's kind of the, the thought of protect your house. You know, we finally have something to call our own. And so a lot of the guys, I mean, the guys, um, we kind of have this mentality of, you're not going to come in here. You can't come in here and take this away from us. You know, it's ours. Um, these are our fans. This is our turf. So having that behind us is something that we can really kind of push ourselves and, uh, and uh, better ourselves to, to keep it safe. So. Awesome. Well, we're really excited to see you here on y'all's turf. Um, and good luck this weekend. Thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you. 
and there it is. The Wildcat Stadium is finally open with all of its new facilities today for the home opener against Houston Baptist University. We'll be back with the Adam Doral Show. Welcome back to the Adam Doral Show. Take a look at the rest of this week's Southland Conference schedule. Ten of the league's 11 football teams in action today. Eight teams are playing their conference openers, and of course that includes ACU against Houston Baptist, the first ever game at Anthony Field at Wildcat Stadium. The Wildcats come in 0-2, of course, those two losses coming to perennial bowl teams from the FBS, New Mexico and Colorado State. The Huskies are 1-1 coach, close loss to an FBS team yeah. in Texas State, and then they beat an FCS opponent in Texas Southern last week on a Thursday, 24-17. These are coming on the heels of Hurricane Harvey. Mm -hmm. Five of their nine full-time coaches had their homes flooded, so it's been a rough yeah. start for them. This is a program that didn't begin until 2014, but when you look at them on film, th this is a, a program that is steadily, from my vantage point, increased its its talent over the last absolutely few years. you know vic i think does a really good job um you look you watch their players they're fundamentally sound and they play hard uh, you go to the first game and there's without question you watch the texas state game they line up and they are uh, much more physical than texas state mm. i thought they pushed them around the field uh, i thought they outplayed them you know obviously the score didn't indicate that but they they were in the right places and they just were a few uh, few plays short but and then uh, last Thursday, obviously, they had a great game and played extremely hard, I'm sure. Uh, the thing that I was impressed with is they didn't make many mistakes. And there's obviously there was had to be a lot emotionally going on with sure. uh, their staff and their and their players. And so, yeah, it's this is going to be a very tough, very physical football game. They've got a freshman quarterback yeah. uh, who, who they really like. They say he's a gritty kid, and you, you've liked what you've seen on film. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. When I watched him, I didn't realize he was a freshman until I was reading through that thing. <laughs> That even after I saw that, I was just super impressed with his poise. And he's making really good decisions, not forcing the football and checking the ball down. And if it's not there, he's scrambling and, you know, trying to live for another day. So uh, mm. very salty football team, and we've got our, our work cut out for us. Most important thing tonight is what? Turnover. So, you know, again, uh, that's number one. Number two, that we don't get caught up in the atmosphere mm. that, that we play Wildcat football. Yeah. Three is that uh, we do what we've done the last two weeks. and. Uh, be ourselves, uh, not try to play outside the scheme, and mm. really get guys focused on doing their job, doing their 111. Go get them. Thank you. Should be an awful lot of fun tonight. It's going to be a night to remember without question. Whether you're an ACU alum or just a resident of the Abilene community, we invite you to be a part of history. Join us for the first ever game at Anthony Field at Wildcat Stadium. You don't get moments like this at ACU or really in the city of Abilene very often. It is a first. Kickoff set for 6 o'clock. We'll have a special one-hour pregame show on 98.1 FM, the ticket, and around the world on acusports.com. For Hannah and for Coach, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching The Adam Doral Show. Enjoy this historic night. We'll see you right here next week on The Adam Doral Show.